It's the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a Wisdom Wednesday presented, of course, as always, by DraftKings. And today, we're getting some really cool wisdom from scientists or engineers or whatever they are. Really looking forward to talking with Lee and Aaron Hansen, the co-founders, co-inventors, co-owners, co-everything of Guardian Caps, which you see everywhere if you're watching NFL football or college football these days, any clips from practices. I'm really curious about these things. Want to learn more about exactly how they work, I know the NFL was looking to implement them even more. The NFL gave us some stats on the success they've been having with them. So I thought it was the perfect time this time of year with high schools all over the place having two-a-days or at least training camp practice. I don't even know if high schools have two-a-days anymore to talk about guardian caps. And uh, I got a bunch of questions, a bunch of questions for them. I have absolutely no questions about what I do if I want a new bathroom or new windows, or a new entryway. Because I already did two new bathrooms with my friends at West Shore Home. It's unbelievable now how many of you tweet me or text me or email me with when you see a commercial for West Shore Home or when you see something like a yard sign. They are everywhere now, including westshorehome.com slash Ross. I put this on social media. Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We're getting 10 entries into a best ball draft, fantasy football. That's all you have to do is go to westshorehome.com slash Ross, schedule a free estimate, forward that to me, ross at rostucker.com, and you will be in the next best ball draft with a chance to win $500 And if you're not familiar with best ball fantasy football, it's amazing. It's all you do. All you do is do the draft, and then the whole season, it just puts your best players automatically in the lineup. It's best ball, and you can do it at westshorehome.com slash Ross. If you forget, check our social medias, at Ross Tucker NFL, at Ross Tucker Pod, because it is right there with the link waiting to take you to your dream destination. It's Big Show time. The Big Show. Well, as promised, I've been looking forward to this one for a while, probably since last year when the NFL first had the O-line and D-line wearing guardian caps. I'm joined now by Aaron and Lee Hansen, the co-owners of Guardian Caps. I don't even know if that's the name of the company. I just know they make guardian caps. I guess we'll find out in a second. Aaron, Lee, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah, no problem. It's nice to be asked. We've been laughed out of rooms for a long time, so to be invited is something new. <laughs> well, so I, I want to start uh, just with the idea and who came up with it and when. Well, it was probably about 2010. So Lee and I own a science technology company as well. Lee started the Hansen Group in 1996. 1996. So um, he's a chemical engineer out of Georgia Tech. We've got a lot of scientists, a lot of engineers, labs working on material science stuff. So we make the coating for the Max Fly and Vice Golf Ball. We do. We do transparent armor. We do bulletproof glass. We do self sealing fuel tanks. Uh, everything waterproofing. A lot of a lot of science and technology stuff for uh, the military. We create things for 3M Corporation, BASF Corporation. Uh, a lot of companies like that come to us to solve problems. So, so in 20, 2010 is when a guy came to us who was trying to do a soft shell helmet, kind of like the precursor to the Vices or even the Speed Flex. He wanted that exterior to flex, and he needed some help with his, with his coating technology. So that's how we got sucked into the helmet space, and it was before its time. And, you know, nobody was, back in 2010, there wasn't the emphasis on CTE or head injury or any of that as much. Mm -hmm. And so when we saw that was going nowhere, you know, we were kind of, we we had raised five children. We were kind of in our golden years of, man, we already, 
put all that hard work in. We need to be like on a cruise somewhere and uh, felt really felt a calling to make a difference if we could. And so we kind of begrudgingly, quite honestly, mm -hmm. said, hey, man, if we can make a difference, we need to and said, what can we do with this? If the helmet redesign isn't the way to go, how do we retrofit every helmet out there? How do we look at these coaches who already have all their budget dollars into this huge inventory of helmets? How do we help them retrofit every helmet and make that a better experience for the players? And okay. So, um, so it's really interesting because I was recently on a call with the NFL where they were touting, you know, the success of the Guardian caps and some of the increases in usage I'm sure you guys know about them and can talk. Why don't we start with um, the science behind it, then we'll get to the, the success that the NFL has had with it so far and the increased mandates in terms of usage. So just start with, and I think most of my listeners and viewers know this, but if you've been watching any practices from preseason, um, I don't know how else to describe it, but it's like the guys have... The, this extra padding that uh, attaches to the top of their helmet and, and makes the collisions softer when the helmets hit each other. So um, can one of you sort of get into the, the science behind it and how it works? Sure, I'll, I'll start and then throw it to Lee. So in the 80s, Mark Kelso, Steve Wallace wore a product that was a soft shell that went on top, but it actually adhered to the helmet and didn't move at all. And so there was concern about the neck and there were some other things and that's when that product went by the wayside. So Lee designed around, he wanted the benefit of that, but none of the downsides. So. Yeah, so we basically use fifth grade physics to create the guardian cap. So it's obvious if you put padding, it's like hitting a pillow, hitting your head against a wall and have a pillow in between you, that's, that's a benefit. You definitely want to have more padding that you're going to hit especially like for your hand or your knee or anything else, it's not going to hurt. What's more important that we found that is, uh, is working better is that when the cap is on the helmet, it's not connected to the helmet. It's decoupled. So when you hit, you get a slight movement. And that movement is redirecting the forces around the helmet. So when somebody gets hit, the force goes around the helmet versus going through the helmet. So you got that. In addition, we found out that it keeps the vibration and the harmonics lower. So a lot of times you hear that loud clack when two helmets hit. Now you hit this, there's, just no, there's no sound. And those harmonics are known in the military for causing TBI. And so we've reduced that. We've done all types of studies. We've got patents on that technology on re reducing the harmonics and the uh, frequencies. And then finally, what we realized, we didn't plan on this, but it worked out for us. We were at a, a, a practice when some kids were playing in a hot summer in Georgia, and they had a couple of helmets out there, and I put my hand on one of the hard shell polycarbonate helmets. It's like, damn, that thing's hot. And if anybody else is out there right now in these 95 to 100 degrees weather, they're gonna realize that. You take the guardian cap and just lift the top up, put it on, put your hand on it, it's cool as a cucumber. It keeps the helmet about 25 to 28 degrees cooler than not having a helmet. So. Like, reduces the radiant energy from going through the shell. So we think reducing the impact, helmet to knees, helmet to elbows, helmet to ground, helmet to helmet makes a difference. We think redirecting the energy kind of like a MIP system makes a difference. It moves independently and it reduces reduces the heat. So those those are what we feel like are the main benefits that we're seeing. I know the NFL has been touting it as one of the reasons for a lot less concussions in training camp. I think they might have said 52% less. Is that the number that you guys have? What, yeah. what they were telling us is in the last, in the three years previous to mandating, the three years before last season, they had an average concussion rate of 23 per preseason in those position groups. Once they put the guardian cap on those positions, it went from 23 down to 11. But out of those 11, six of them were face mask to face mask. They didn't even involve the cap. So they said with the cap involved, it was more like about five. five. So they're saying, you know, more than 50% is the number that they're using. Um, you know, I think what's interesting about that, and you guys know this, you're scientists, is it seems like with every passing year, 
there's less practices and less contact in practice. So it's not exactly like a perfect experiment, right? Well, I mean, there's, you can concuss by hitting a kid in the chest. So there's no product. Our product is not going to make a kid bulletproof. It's just not going to happen. And we're, we're pretty responsible about that. I mean, anecdotally, do we hear back from coaches about those concussion rates going way down? Absolutely. I mean, that's why we're still here. You know, if, it, if we weren't hearing that, we would have closed up shop a long time ago. But, you know, you can't take all of the risk out of football. And even if the practice – if the practice hits are less by year, which is a great thing, you've still got incidental contact. You know, you've still got that kid hitting the ground. You've still got other, other contacts. Yeah, that and what we're hearing anecdotally, every, every coach out there from Alabama, Georgia, Florida, everyone out there, they're continually to use it because they are seeing benefits. They're, they're, they, we don't get all the numbers that they're telling us, but we get a lot of anecdotal data back. That they're saying, hey, this thing is working and we're going to continue using it. Thank you. Uh, this is great. I think if people heard the feedback that we actually get, they'd be blown away. We don't share it because we try to be responsible. I don't want that mom whose kid has had four concussions to call up and say, I'm going to put a guardian cap on him and throw him back on the field. So we, 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 don't, we don't make claims that we don't have data to back up. And that's what's, that's what's beautiful about what the NFL is doing is, I mean, they're filming everything, they're, they're calculating everything, they're recording everything. So it's cool that, you know, for the first time in what's been about 13 years, yeah. we've, we've got that kind of data to back it up. You know, lab, lab data is great. You know, you can go in a lab all day long, but to actually see the experience on the field is something different. You know, I think the one thing I heard, one of the complaints, I guess, was that it was slipping around last year. And so uh, I think the NFL told me this, but you guys were able to figure out a way so it doesn't slip anymore, correct? Well, we want it to move. So we wanted it to slip, but we don't want it to drive them crazy and we don't want it to be a distraction in practice. So movement is good. Too much movement is a pain in the butt. So what we did is, is we just made some minor tweaks of where the straps were located, and it's, it's keeping them down a whole lot better. Mm -hmm. yeah, so if you well, the good news is uh, if it's keeping players safer, that gives players more time to drink Labatt Blue Light with me because <laughs> Labatt Blue Light is absolutely delicious. So when you're taking your Guardian cap off, put your Labatt Blue Light bottle in your mouth. Always enjoy responsibly beer, Labatt USA, Buffalo, New York. <laughs> I gotta tell you guys, I, I even cracked myself up on the segue. <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. When that came up, it's like, what is a beer break? I'm, wait a minute. That was it's, hey, I got I gotta get it in somehow. Hey, <laughs> hey Lee, this this show doesn't pay for itself. You know what I mean? I got I gotta get the uh, the beer sponsor in at some point. Um <laughs> I'm I'm curious. Uh, one thing I had heard: how how heavy are they? The the high school youth version is about seven ounces. I mean, it's less than half a pound. This, I I I see all the things on Twitter going, man, that thing must be heavy. It's I mean, it's less than half a pound. Seven ounces is nothing. The NFL version has a little bit more padding on the inside, so that thing's a little over eleven ounces. So it's a little bit heavier. That's why we don't sell the NFL version online because I don't want a high school or youth parent to be buying that. So we, it's advertised on our website because there were questions about it, but we, we don't sell that online. So it's about 11 ounces. Still, still Interesting. Okay. Hard. And how much, how much do helmets weigh these days? Oh, oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> there's some new helmets out there that are, are for the youth that are going around uh, two and a half to three pounds, but the typical Rydell shut vice helmet are going five or six pounds i mean they're 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 really really heavy so i played you guys will appreciate this or maybe you won't i don't know but i played in the nfl from 2001 to 2008 and that was like when they first started introducing some of like the lighter helmets mm -hmm. yeah. and i should note that like the cte research like cte wasn't even a thing until maybe 2008 right like right after i retired at least not a thing that was talked about Okay, so I remember they came to me with multiple helmets. I had short arms, so um, unfortunately, uh, potentially for me moving forward, um, I headbutted guys all the time. You know, I, mean, I used my head a lot, and uh, unfortunately, you know, we didn't we didn't know any different, didn't know any better, whatever. 
But I remember they tried to give me one of those lighter helmets. And I remember being like, I don't want that. I want the heaviest helmet you have. Like, I want the heaviest thing you have. It's, just, it's crazy to think about how much it's changed. But I did talk with someone that was a little bit concerned about the weight of it and how that would affect players because it's different than when they don't have it on. I, I guess I wonder if a pound is enough to really make a difference. It, well, I mean, it's less than a pound. You know, that's that, and especially, you know, what these college, high school, and youth are playing with. I mean, seven ounces, less than half a pound. I mean, I guess it's kind of like, you know, for boxing and stuff. Yeah. I guess maybe it helps you train better. Maybe it helps your neck strengthen, you know, so that by the time you get to game day, maybe you're even faster. Yeah, most of the coaches we've yeah. talked to, they said when the kids get them on, the first thing they say, go, well, this is different. After day one, they don't even notice it. They just put it on and don't even notice it. So... <laughs> Any, uh, any concerns, guys, um, about a false sense of security? I think, I think that people are educated enough now to know you want to use your head as little as possible. Obviously, we didn't know that uh, back then, but I think most people know if you can use your hands, you can use your shoulders, you want to do that. I think for the most part, they're trying to keep their head out. And by the way, almost any action on a football field you're better off with your head out of it anyway you know what I mean you're better off seeing what you hit you're better off not using it but I guess the one question I had had was with those things on does it give some of the guys a little bit of a false sense of security uh, to be able to use their head and so we we've heard that a lot and talked to different coaches about it and they they felt like the first of all that's a coaching thing right if you see a kid being you know keeping that head down even more then that's a coaching thing that's a technique thing it's like dude you know that's not going to work with us but what they tell us is that it's more of a reminder when you're on the line across from a guy who's wearing a guardian cap it's like oh yeah man you know they're trying to do all they can i need to keep my head up and out of it so they felt the opposite and, and we did have, I think, it, I think it was Clemson or something, after the season, we got caps back off the line, and they said this was the first time they had a physical thing to look at to see the, see the technique different among two players. Like, you've got this lineman whose cap looks like brand new, and you've got the guy next to him whose cap is ripped and compressed. It's like, dude, man, you're keeping your head way too low. We need to keep an eye on that guy. So, you know, having a couple scratches on the helmet doesn't mean the same thing. So they, they, they liked it for yeah. that reason. Um, what about, you know, I, I've seen the data on the concussion stuff. Uh, I follow the CTE stuff pretty closely for obvious reasons. And um, everything I know is that it's about the volume of hits to the head. So... What does the guardian cap do for that? I mean, it doesn't change the volume of hits to the head. It just makes those hits to the head um, not, not as significant, not as forceful, correct? You know, Purdue did a study um, seven, many years ago, and they studied a lot of high school kids. And what they uh, realized was a typical high school lineman takes between 1,200 and 1,500 hits to his head every football season. That's practice of the games. 1,200 to 1,500 continuous hits to his head. And with that, that, that they, they measured around 700 is where they started seeing the same results as somebody getting a concussion. So it's almost like a pitcher's uh, throw count. It's like you can only throw so many and you got to be taken out. They were trying to look at that aspect. But what we're realizing is what they're doing is on the 1,200 hits with a guardian cap, instead of getting... 1,260 G hits, they're getting 1,230 G hits or 40 G hits. So it's reducing the impact and the amount of it's, impact. It's, really, you know, it's the accumulation of all those subconcussive hits that they're looking at now. So all CTE research, it's like if we can reduce that accumulation either in number or in force, mm -hmm. it's going to make a positive difference. Do you guys think that there's a chance? It sounds like the NFL, Jeff Miller was saying recently that there's even the possibility that they might have them wear these in games. What are your thoughts on that? 
Shocked us as much as everyone else. Haven't heard that before. We're always the last one to know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I do know that there's youth leagues that wear them in games. Um, high school teams now are using them in their scrimmage games, which is awesome. We didn't make it as a game day product. We, we knew that, you know, if we were going to get large adoption and help kids and help players as much as we could, if we know this thing doesn't look great. I mean, let's face it, we, we don't look at it and say, damn, this is the best looking thing we could come up with, but it worked from day one. I mean, the positive feedback, and you don't want to mess with something that's working. So we never, we never set out to change to game day. We know that that's got a lot to do with the pageantry of everything, and you know, the helmets are a big, a big part of that. But that said, we are making it look better, yep. and we are, you know, coming up with a design now that's the the prototype's almost ready that we can logo and make game day ready if it ever goes in that direction. You know, and if Aaron not, and Lee, thank goal. you so much for coming on the show. Very, very interesting. Um, I wanted to learn more about it because I've been seeing it everywhere. Obviously, practice everything. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks, appreciate Ross. It, Ross. We appreciate nice meeting it. you. Take you take care, care now. Le esta gustando mi podcast? That means, are you liking my podcast? See, I mean, that's all from Babbel right there. Boom. Spanish expert already from Babbel. Huge fan of Babbel. My daughters and I did a couple of their lessons, their quick 10-minute lessons, before we went down to Ecuador and the Galapagos Islands. If you are traveling at all, or even if you've just kind of always wanted to learn a second language, highly encourage Babbel. I mean, they're approachable, they're accessible, their lessons are rooted in real life situations, crazy easy to use. There's a reason why they have over 10 million subscriptions sold. Here's a special limited time deal for you guys to get you started right now. Get 55% off your Babbel subscription only for our listeners at babbel.com slash Ross. Get 55% off at babbel.com slash Ross. Spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash Ross. Rules and restrictions may apply. Tux takes. All right, Ross. We'll start with Zach Martin and the Cowboys. They agreed to a two-year fully guaranteed deal for over $36 million. It's about $8 million raised, but a $1 million fine. So happy for Zach to get more money. He deserves it. He's still not even one of the top two highest paid guards, but they needed to bump him up. I don't still don't understand why he gave a million dollars back when he didn't need to, but whatever. Two of the biggest free agents finally find a home. Patriots signed Ezekiel Elliott to a one-year deal worth $4 million, and the Jets signed Dalvin Cook to a $7 million deal. Yeah, I don't do the up to. I'm not into the up to, okay? What are they definitely getting? And I guess I would tell you, I'd, I'd much rather have Dalvin Cook for $7 million than Zeke Elliott for $4 million, based on what I've seen from those guys. So to me, that's a win for the Jets. The difference is Dalvin Cook will be the starter, I believe, for the Jets, especially while Brees Hall is still working his way back, whereas Zeke is the backup. The Patriots are going to, I mean, it makes sense for both teams. Patriots are going to try to pound people with Ramondre. Now they can pound with Zeke as well. And then the Jets, you know, they couldn't take a chance that Brees Hall doesn't come back to form. Colts running back Jonathan Taylor is back with the team, but he's still on the PUP. But Ravens running back J.K. Dobbins has been activated to the active roster from the PUP. This is going to be my Labatt take of the week, Jack, presented by Labatt Blue Light, the pristine Canadian Pilsner. Enjoy your beers together so you can live life to the power of we. Always enjoy responsibly beer. Labatt USA, Buffalo, New York. As for J.K. Dobbins, one of two things happened. Either they have kind of a wink-wink deal worked out, and that will be announced the next couple weeks, or he saw Justice Hill and Keaton Mitchell playing really well for the Ravens and thought, I better come back so I don't lose my playing time. As for Jonathan Taylor, he just needs to stay the course. I don't believe that the Colts want to play games without Jonathan Taylor, He's still getting paid. You're on the PUP list. You're getting paid. I think Jonathan Taylor, he needs to have the fortitude to stay the course. And if he does, he will eventually get an upgrade to his contract. The time is now, Jonathan Taylor. Stand your ground. Other than that, 
huge day tomorrow with Greg Cosell. Really looking forward to it. I think we're done here. Thanks for listening to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Fantasy Feasts, Even Money, Business of Sports, and College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found. Shout outs. Pizza Boy Brewing. Sportaculture. HumanHeadNYC.com. SteakhouseSports.com. Go-Bangles.com. BackOfficeSchedule.com. And the greatest anniversary gift you could ever give your wife, your parents, whoever, a story all about their relationship or your relationship, myfrontpagestory.com should become the biggest anniversary gift in the country within one year, myfrontpagestory.com.